Hello and welcome to vlog number 9. I decided to talk about my decision to have DBS this week. But the more I think about it, the more I have to say about it. So I've decided to split it into two parts, this being part 1. I've seen it written that less than 10% of Parkinson's disease patients are considered suitable to have deep brain stimulation surgery. Of this 10%, 90% decline the opportunity. If true, then that's a pretty significant refusal rate. So, how do you make a decision to have brain surgery? When my neurologist first suggested it to me, I was dead set against it. I only knew of one person who had had brain surgery with Parkinson's, and he died on the operating table. So, you can imagine that didn't exactly endear me to the thought. When my neurologist suggested DBS, I remember my wife asking him, if it was you, what would you do? And he replied, he's young, he has plenty of life ahead of him. I think he's a good candidate for DBS, so if I were him, I'd go for it. It was this statement that actually made me consider having the operation. My neurologist moved to Australia soon after that, and I never got to see him again. So, if you're watching this video, Dr Robert Adam, I'd like to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being responsible for changing my life. Obviously, there's a whole team of people at the National Hospital for Neurology and Neurosurgery in London that I'm also eternally grateful to. But if it hadn't been for Dr Adam, then I wouldn't have gone for it. Certainly not at the point that I did. The real decision whether or not to have the operation comes a long way down the road. Firstly, I had to be referred to a neurologist within the DBS team in London. And that neurologist has to consider whether you appear to be a good candidate for surgery. Once that hurdle is cleared, there is a two-day assessment where the various team members discuss with you how Parkinson's affects you personally, what it prevents you from doing and how it affects your day-to-day -day life. Your symptoms are assessed, along with your response to Parkinson's medication. You are made to perform many of the familiar motor function tests, such as drawing a spiral, providing a sample of your handwriting, signing your name, etc. Your mental state is determined, and they have you perform various memory and mental agility tests. Many of the tests are performed twice, once when you are completely unmedicated, and again after being given levodopa. Being off Parkinson's medication wasn't a problem for me, because I wasn't, and am not, taking any prescription medication for BD. When they gave me some benzeratide levodopa, I was confidently expecting there to be no effect because none of the medications I had been prescribed previously had had any effect on my symptoms. I was astonished, therefore, to find that the manapar that I had been given had a dramatic effect on my tremor. No doubt it affected other symptoms as well, but tremor reduction was what I noticed because tremor was the symptom that I found intolerable. Unfortunately, this medication made me feel so ill that I couldn't continue taking it, although I did persist for six weeks. If you pass the assessment, then you have an appointment with the entire multidisciplinary team. It was quite a shock to walk into a room and have about 20 people greet you, from the head of the DBS team, to the neurosurgeon, to students of neurology and neurosurgery. The team discussed the operation with you, show you the hardware that will be installed, which was quite an eye-opener. I'd imagine the wires going into my brain as being very fine, not slightly thicker than the size of an uncooked spaghetti. They ask you questions and answer any questions which you may have. And still you can change your mind about having the surgery, at any point up until the actual day of the operation. If the multidisciplinary team agree that you are suitable, then you are offered the operation, subject to funding. I am grateful to the trust that runs the Norfolk and Norwich Hospital for agreeing to fund my operation. The actual operation date was scheduled to be about three months after my meeting with the multidisciplinary team. The total elapsed time from the point at which my neurologist at the Norfolk and Norwich Hospital referred me to the DBS team, to the time of the operation itself, was just over 12 months. Next week I'll talk more about my mental processes and how I decided to go ahead with my surgery. Thanks for watching, have a good week, 
We'll see you next Friday.